I'm just had surgery last week, so I'm pretty good. What do you have surgery on? My lower, my like sciatic, my sacred joints in my back. They go in and cut the nerves in it, burn them. Yeah, there was one time my temperature was 104.6, but that, I don't have any brains to do any brain damage, so I was okay. <laughs> well, well, welcome back, guys, uh, to another season of the uh, podcast. It's um, September 7th. I thought it would be a good time. I kind of wanted to get back together last week, but, you know, just things uh, didn't necessarily work out. We're in the preseason. Um the 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 2024 25 uh, wrestling season will kick off in a couple months, but um, want to catch up with you guys, see how things were this summer, and um, yeah, talk some college wrestling, talk some local wrestling, and look forward to the season. So, how you guys been, and what's new with uh, with you? Go ahead, Dan. Uh, been pretty good, you know. Busy summer with uh, kids, baseball, softball soccer trying to get a little golf in you know watching wrestling as much as you can you know try to get up every morning at 4 a.m to watch the olympics <laughs> i did that <laughs> you know it was uh it was pretty good though yeah how about you marty um having a great summer <clears throat> golf a ton just hanging out loving retirement we're going to south dakota on, on monday go to the black hills and see that for a week and a half and so things are great can't wait for wrestling to start high school sports has started hananiga is off to a good start in football conference is terrible it is there's a a couple big dogs and then a lot of people that just show up friday nights it's sad oh yeah. i saw a, a picture with um two individuals on hananiga's football team that they looked like grown uh, monsters, <laughs> and I was like, I really, I was like, I really hope these guys are wrestling a little bit. Man, they were they're they're big kids, but um, yeah, I don't know if they are. I don't know. They got some guys on their offensive line that are monsters. There's two yeah, brothers, the I think Benson that, brothers. That might have been the two that they they, yeah. they posted a picture of, but they're they're big kids. But yeah. Um, Speaking of, of Olympics, you guys, uh, let's catch up with some Olympics. Um, you know, the U.S. Oof, didn't do, as far as uh, medal count, um, tremendously well, but they were fun to watch. You can use the word terrible if you want to. It was it was a horrendous showing by our Olympics. It team. was. I, I will throw that out there. We didn't win a Greco match. Why do we even go for Greco? Like, <laughs> here. Go over there, guys. I mean, we didn't win one match in Greco. That's just insane to me. Like, yeah. Well, I think freestyle. Oh, go ahead. I'm just go. saying, Greco. You know, Greco is really hard to even like um, critique, just because like the way that Greco is structured, it's it's always a flip of the coin. Besides, like certain matches are kind of blowouts, but it's always like a. I I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Greco. Um, no. So it's I just, just don't. It's a different sport. Like, and it's, you know, the guys we're sending, I mean, they're the best in the U.S. I mean, they're not bad wrestlers. It's just like they get over. I, we just can't compete in Greco. It's yeah, but, crazy to me. Yeah, but that I, I, it's easy to say that, but it's like every other year we do. There, Some guys do really well, you know, like, you know, Kamal Bay uh, has done really well over the last you know five years it's just one well, tournament looks bad we do and then, we do well you know, in the smaller like the smaller tournaments we don't do well in the bigger international tournaments like worlds or olympics or i mean pan am games yeah we dominate but who are we wrestling against mexico it, isn't herbert the new uh, like coach or advisor of the whole greco thing herb house how herb house he's an illinois yeah. kid isn't he yeah yeah, yeah. he wrestled uh Kelly Hamill back in the day. Yeah. You know what, though? What needs to happen is there needs to be more funding for it. Those guys have got to be able to wrestle year-round. Yeah. And go and travel all over the world so they can, you know, yeah, all right. So you won the U.S. Nationals here in Greco. Well, that doesn't mean much when you go and go to the World Championships or the Olympics. Right. So. Well, I think the whole – Well, do you, whole, here's a better uh, question. Process you, needs to be overhauled. Yeah, like, but let's have a better question. Team. Let's have a better question. 
Okay. Because okay. we're talking about whether or not these guys need funding, right? Like, where does funding come from? Does it fall out of the sky? Who's giving it? Why are they giving it? Like, um, what is the pinnacle of the sport? And, like, should we direct our, like, energy and effort towards uh, building that product as far as entertainment uh, standpoint? Um, like Greco, you put a bunch of money into it. Okay, that means there's not money going to um, other, whether it's college, right? Like college, the, right now it seems like college is the the vacuum for financial incentive for donors, people who have money that want to just donate it. Um, you know, outside of some billionaire uh, philanthropist, how are you going to fund um, that? So I'm just curious whether or not you like switch focus as far as, Greco is always, it's not the attention, right? Like people aren't going to Greco. So we're talking about it. I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> well, we are talking about it. Because I like Greco. Yeah, but Greco is but a here's the thing. It's not just funding for Greco. It's funding for the U.S. wrestling team. Right. Overall, I think when you see and i you know maybe this has been the norm forever but you know kennedy blades qualifies and they have a gofundme page to help pay for her expense like i just thought and maybe i'm you know oblivious to this but if i made the olympic team i thought the u.s picked up my tab right i'm i'm representing the u.s yeah i think they're know. talking about getting their family there so USA Wrestling is not responsible for right, and that's hundred percent. That should be on you, but I don't know. I think I don't know. I think you know Japan's pulling away, oh, both big time. men's and women's. You know, and you watch, and I know the U.S. is a little different, but you watch those guys. They have the same coaches in their corner, like right. the U.S. Like they got every guy has their own individual coach. I don't know if they train together ever. You know, so, and I know it's the U.S. is a little different because our guys need to work. You know, they have to have a job. They can't just train 24-7. I mean, some maybe can, but, um, you know, I think the rest of the world's catching up, and especially Japan. I mean, they were impressive at the Olympics. And both in women's and men's. Yeah. They, yeah, they were Women's great. were getting a little closer. You know, I yeah. think – I think the women we do better because they wrestle freestyle in college. The right. only place the girls don't wrestle freestyle is in high school, and they should change that too. I mean, so they're competing freestyle year round. I don't think we're ever going to see that in our lifetime for the men. What's that? Freestyle at the college freestyle. level, freestyle at the high school level. It's never going to well, happen. No, I think that would be a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah. And Nobody would, I mean, they can't understand most of it right now, let alone put, change the whole thing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Too many parents well, every, again, throw out like, everything you've ever learned about wrestling and now watch. But again, <laughs> you know, we've had this conversation before, but like what I'm kind of alluding to is like, okay, so Iowa wrestling one, it's a huge brand, it's college. So there are so many people that participate in, in watching what Iowa does just because they're you know, University of Hawkeye students, their University of Iowa, like alumni, there's actual fan base connected to it. Um, less people watch the Olympics for wrestling oh. than they do for college wrestling. Well, so, it's not fan. It wasn't fan friendly this year. It's not, no. Well, it's never fan friendly in the sense that nobody who comes to it has a root, a team to root for other than the USA. And because it's wrestling, people don't really uh, care about it. Right. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, I'm just yeah. saying it doesn't seem like I'm just not a fan of freestyle Greco because not only is it modified rules that I just don't think are real. Um, I don't think they're really based off of grappling or, or wrestling specifically. Um, there's no top and bottom. There's no riding. There's no turning. There's no uh, pinning. There's no, you know, all that stuff that I think is so much more dynamic to the sport. But then two, you know, you're just, distracting yourself from the pinnacle and clearly you know we can start into this now with college wrestling but the pinnacle of the sport is college wrestling uh it is where you in the united states it, yeah yes but the rest of the world doesn't matter because nobody is watching the rest of the world wrestling right like it's not it's yeah. not even i mean your, more people more people hard fans yeah are they, the people who watch 
I think what you run into is like you're alluding to, you know, Marty's a big Iowa fan, right? Kind, no, kind so, of. Yeah. They're so drifting you, away uh, from me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, these guys who are Iowa fans, Penn State fans, they pull for their guys all year. They they hate, they don't like Spencer Lee, right? They don't root for Spencer Lee. They, you know, and now all of a sudden, Spencer Lee's representing the U.S. Well, now you have to root for Spencer Lee. And I think there's a little disconnect there. Mm hmm. I agree. You know, when you follow Penn State, you're following every guy that boom, 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 that's my guy. And in a college, you create rivalries. Well, at the Olympic level, the international level, now your your biggest rivals are the guys you got to pull for. So I think that, you know, you saw it with Jordan Burroughs. I mean, the guy's the most decorated international wrestler, and the Penn State fans are out there booing him. <laughs> I mean, Come on, he, he for years he's been our best wrestler representing the U.S. and these people are just booing him like, you know. So you got to get past at the international level. You got to be able to get past those rivalries and support. And you know, that, you know what Jordan Burroughs is really good at now too, commentating. Yeah, I liked him for the Olympics. I don't know why he's going back to wrestle again. No, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe. To leave his shoes and yeah, and I, you know. But I I totally enjoyed his commentating. I thought he did a great job with the Olympics. Yeah, he did. I yeah, thought I mean, he it's did always nice job. to have knowledgeable people talking. Yeah, while yeah. The, I thought he did a good job at the NCAA's. He didn't say anything no one else was thinking. The guy right. hasn't said like you attack you attack it like, and they're up in arms. Oh my god, I can't believe he said what. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Their coach is telling them, you know, it's like, what the heck are we thinking here? Yeah. Okay. One more thing on the Olympics. So I might okay. ask, I might, what I saw is like Dan brought up a great point. Those guys, I don't think ever get together as a group for like a month and train and on a daily basis together. And I actually, for the first time in a long time, noticed that some of our guys got winded. Yeah. Like they got tired. They usually just take those Europeans and drive them into the ground. But they actually got tired, especially Mason Paris. Man, he looked terrible. Yeah, yeah, he you know? did not. Well, did you um, did you hear Chael Sonnen's take on that? No. Well, he had a take where he was he was uh, explaining that if you want to win at the highest level in the Olympics, go train with a um, college folk style team. And he said all the guys that are doing this freestyle training. You know, they're coming in afterwards. They're, you know, they're trying to do peak performance. So they wrestle two days a week and, you know, all this stuff. And he, yeah, you'll have to check it out. But he was alluding to the idea that they're getting away from the grind of wrestling, which makes, uh, you know, you know, <clears throat> makes the endurance capacity, the hand fighting endurance, the, you know, the toughness that a res uh, American wrestlers have traditionally right. brought um, and turned it into, the opposite and you know like a guy like jordan burroughs i think his style might actually be okay with you know kind of like trying to i don't even know conserve his um his his, his health and or his uh, explosiveness because he's like kind of like a go 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 and then or you know relax relax let go yeah. whereas you know some of these other guys need to really just pick up the pace in order to beat people so yeah, you should check it out. It's a I will. interesting take. I'll say, going with what you just said, watching the U20s, that, uh, is it Connor Mirasala? Mirasola. Wrestling, and uh, right away gives up a four-point move, but with four minutes or whatever, after a minute and a half, he had broke his guy, just banging <laughs> on his head, outworking. All of a sudden, the guy, every time, is pulling the sack up, coming out, and he ends up teching him. So it goes to what you're saying is like our guys should outwork. You know, that was the staple, like uh what Zane Rutherford, right? Yeah. Like he just goes and goes and usually he wears his guys down, but yes, our guys were pulling up their socks and looking around the arena. You know who I saw that was really disappointing in it was uh Dake. Oh god. Yeah. Like, and his match in the you know, and not Taken anyway. I mean, you're wrestling the best guys in the world. That Japan kid is tougher than hell, but like he just did not look like he was ready for that match. And he's sitting there pulling up socks. You know, there was, <laughs> I don't know. 
Well, I can only imagine my, my back in the day. I yeah, I can only imagine the difficulty with maintaining the same type of energy and effort when it comes to training. I mean, it's a very very difficult thing to to stay uh, with the gas pedal down for. I mean, he's what three Olympic cycles? That's twelve years of wrestling. And, yeah, and, and I mean, he's to in do that thirties, which is yeah. And, and plus, again, he has to make a living. Yeah. You know, he's fortunate enough. He probably. Yeah, he's you know, one of the. Uh, branding, he makes a pretty decent living on the side, but, you know. I think he'll be a good head coach at Iowa. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking of head coaches, yeah. how about, I don't know, did we ever talk about Dale, David Taylor going out to Oklahoma State? Oh, uh, he's. It's we awesome. Talked briefly, but yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I think so. Did you see anything about Scott or, or Scaracci? And he's moving up to 84, right? Moving up to 97, <clears throat> 97. I thought. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, you see what, did you see the financial backing that he got? It's like millions, right? Like Something one point. Next. I think it was 1.5. Well, again, we don't know this is whether or not this is true or not this is speculation based on one video i don't really know where the other information came from i didn't look into it but um yeah it's all speculation you don't really know how much money they're actually uh getting but it looks like there's significant um more than us probably yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, let, let's cut it in half which is again going back to my point is like the money is clearly at the college level. Um, we can oh, see totally. it in other sports. Um, this is an opportunity for the big brands to pull their resources together and get get the the very best athletes to to perform. And so, you know, lately the talk was was has been Iowa and how um, they're going after. They went after the Arizona State uh, kid, uh, Parker. Kids, both of them. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, the, then they got rid of basically a couple others. Um, so yeah, Marty, you're the uh, resident Iowa fan. Um, what do you it's, think about that? I don't think it matters what we think. It, it's just the. Well, way I mean, the, yeah, this is. I mean, it's so it's the way the sport has turned. NIL yeah. has changed yeah. everything, and uh, it's just like it. But it, it, what it does is just think about this as a, as a person. As I grew up, well, if I didn't make the starting lineup, what am I? I just had to sit on the bench or get better. You know. You just can't all of a sudden like, well, I'm going to leave. I'm leaving Iowa. I'm leaving Iowa. They lost four kids like in a week span because they knew they weren't going to start. But uh, that's just how it is, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole it, other it, thing. It's a the transfer portal has created where hey, we need a 33 pounder. Uh, let's go here rather than hey, let's look for these high school kids that we're going to develop and then right. turn them into our guy. <clears throat> and I, you know, I'm all about some loyalty and there's you know. Yeah, and you can go both ways. Like, don't you've been through it? Hey, we're gonna promise you this, this, this. You're gonna come in here, and then once you get in there, you know it's not, you know, the the rainbows aren't there like they told you they're gonna be. And so for some kids, it gives them it gives you a reason to to move on. Like, hey, I don't fit in here. I'm gonna look elsewhere. But you know, you get these kids are three or four different schools in a five year span, and I don't know. You know what I I think I wish they would have a cutoff time a little bit later or earlier, because those were decisions made like a week or so before school was even going to start. You know, or maybe they made it public then, but I don't know. But I I think the cutoff date should be a little bit earlier. Yeah, for I think they're, which part they're talking the about the chain. Yeah, yeah, the transfer portal. Yeah, they sh they can't like transfer a week before school starts. You know, yeah, well, I, I guess this we're wasn't about. part of the transfer portal. What's that? I guess this what this part wasn't a transfer portal because the Parco kid uh, did his own due diligence to enroll in school, so those kids at Iowa didn't necessarily know that Parco was going there until a week before. So if you don't allow the transfer students or the transfer portal, then those kids from Iowa wouldn't have been able to get out and find another opportunity to potentially compete this year because they'd be stuck in the position where, oh, first week of school, this guy shows up and we didn't know he was coming because. He didn't show up through the transfer portal. He showed up through his own, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, his own process in order to apply to the school and stuff. 
Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. And plus, I mean, this is what I said online uh, recently was that you know the one good thing about this is it is it from my standpoint as a former athlete, it's like it's exposing the truth that it that has always existed that these coaches are trying to create a team which performs really well, which makes them look good. And if you're not the one that's going to make them do that, they will find another to do that. And they always have before the only negotiating chip that they used was uh, scholarships. So <clears throat> before they would just give kids scholarships, they would put a lot of energy and effort into that kid or, they would find ways to take away the scholarship from a kid and give it to another, you know, they would do all that stuff. But now it's just like, well, we got a new, we got, we got a better guy. And so I just think it's exposing how a lot of these top tier programs have always operated that if you're not the one that's going to take them to the top, they're going to find somebody else. And so from an athlete perspective, I think it's good information for people going into college to know that you're, you, you are embarking on a business venture that there's a mutual agreement where you're going to try to provide them the value that they need. And in return, they're going to try to provide you with value in coaching with, uh, you know, help with education or whatever. And then, you know, going back and forth. So I just think it's good exposure that, you know, this is a dog eat dog world and, and uh, these guys are trying to win and it's competitive. So be ready to, to deal with that. I don't think that's, generally you know new knowledge i think it's always been people always knew that like these college coaches are paid to succeed they're not paid to put out whatever you know so they've always sure but they've never looked it, for they've their lied best. about it before they used to say hey we want you you're the man we we don't want to invest right. the time and energy now it's like well they're, they're still it's, saying the same things sure but, but now, now they people, just have a financial backing but what i'm saying now the parents and athletes know that like that's all window dressing what they're saying from a recruiting standpoint is all window dressing that's like that's a good thing parents aren't going to necessarily fall in love with the first coach that calls them and says <laughs> hey we love you right you know, now they go well yeah you say you love us but we just watched you kick out a, a division one starter out of your room and take in somebody else so what happens to us you know so and they're what it's 30 scholarships now too right yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Let, yeah, that's another mm -hmm. talking point. Let's, uh, because I personally Let's am just, super excited about that. Now, yeah, that's nice the, because it you can spread the money and you get money to work with, and now, you know, limits right, and you're limited, right? You can only have thirty guys in your room. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what so. the I think it is too. Is. Yeah, I think because uh, I thought that's what uh, Colin Young had told Danny out of Oklahoma state, there was like 30 some guys who were training 30 plus guys. And he had to get inside that top 30 to be in the room. Yeah. So. Well, what's cool about it is we're talking about the loyalty aspect. Now here's a way that you can actually buy your loyalty a little bit better. It's like, Hey, listen, you're not the person that's going to be the starter, but you know, you stay here. We're going to pay for you to stay here. You're not taking on that financial uh, loss and now we can build you for three years from now and you can have the Jesse Whitmer case where you don't wrestle for three years and then you wrestle and you win a national title. So I like this because all the stuff that we're talking about when it comes to um, loyalty and people wanting to go other places, it's like, well, at least if you're taking care of the education component, the financial bet, uh, burden, that's at least a start to be like more loyal to uh, a particular place. Yeah, but in the end, if Marty's your backup and you're telling them, hey, in three years you can be the guy, and I'm sitting over at Northern Illinois, say, hey, Marty, we'll give you $2 million if you come here this year. I don't think Marty's staying there to sit on the bench for three years. The problem, That's where the transfer the, portal comes in. The problem is with that is I have a doctor's note that I can't wrestle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I would say is, you know, I don't care. <laughs> Let up, throw that away. That, what doctor told you that party? Come on. Yeah. But Let's if you're talk. a guy, if, well, hold on. Let me just say this. If you're a guy that you're, you're at Iowa and you, and your goal is to win a division one national title, you're, if you're not the best, 
right? You're not going to transfer for the extra money because if you can't win, you you. That's all I'm saying is some guys are going to stay at that particular place because they know if they're not the best in that room, they're not the best in the country. So it doesn't matter right. where you go. Um, if you're motivated from financial components, then yeah, you might take that. But uh, that was they were you were going to take that anyway. So um, yeah, so I, I got one one other topic or just. Yeah, yeah. So the new schools that are added to the Big Ten, all yeah. right, none of them have wrestling. No. Do you That's think all... they're, do you think they're gonna somehow kind of say, hey, you need to start a wrestling program out west? I don't. I don't I... think so because it's. Here's my my take on this: is they should just get rid of the conferences for football because that's all it's for. You know, right. we want bigger conferences and teams make a decision on what conference is going to pay more for their revenue out of their big 10 channel, SEC network, right? Just get rid of those conferences because like in the end of the day, you got Stanford who's in the ACC now. So you got Stanford way over here in California. They're going to have to fly all the way down to play at Miami. Right. Right. And then when they wrestle, they're yeah. going over. You got to wrestle Virginia. You got to wrestle Virginia Tech. Yep. I mean, it's it, it kills those smaller sports. Like the revenue stream comes up because you're getting more money from your football program. But I don't think they'll ever push to. Hey, you now you got to look to start a wrestling program. God, I wish they would. Though it'd be awesome. Oh, it would be. But it's go to the big. Take, go it, go it to the takes big. Money away from the bigger machine that they care yeah. about. Yeah, but you wouldn't know, it be great going out to the Big Ten? Go ahead. I was going to say football at the D1 level is probably the only sport across the board that makes a lot of money. Basketball yeah. for some schools, but not all schools in basketball. They're not, you know, selling out. But, I mean, football has just become a beast of its own that it should just be it should totally be. separate. You got five regions and, boom, these are the teams you play in at the end and play for the national title. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice in March to go out to California to the Big Ten, though? Oh, heck yeah. I'm a little <laughs> disappointed they're at Northwestern this year. Yeah, where are they going to have it at, you know? I no clue. Is is that the Evanston or the U and U uh, Northwestern Arena, can it fit four mats? Or are they going to have to have it out? Where do they do the Midlands at? At that Now Center now, or whatever it's yeah, called. Now arena. Yeah, which is great. It's a great facility. Yeah. With us even closer, but yeah, that yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, I, I think that would be a, a good spot for Big Tens because we could go to it and um, it could fill up. That that could be a really uh, interesting venue if yeah. they did that because it would be the, awesome. The Midlands is nice, but it's not the Big Ten tournament. The Big no. Ten tournament could right. really fill the that now oh. arena pretty well. So and it, and it, and the Illinois fans would still be outnumbered. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know the problems with the Midlands too. I mean, we go there all the time, but it is totally not fan friendly. That first yeah. day, they wrestle till like ten o'clock at night. It's yeah. just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just to button up that the the Big Ten stuff uh, with like football, I just think in general, like uh, wrestling seems to be self funded. So unless like they have self funded people come to those schools and be like, hey, here's you know. Here's $10 million. Here's $20 million. We're going to start a program. It's start going to be self-funded. You don't have to worry about anything. We've got a donor to, to build a facility for training. No problems. Unless that happens, <laughs> it's not happening. And the, and the problem with that is no alumni have ever wrestled there. So why would they go back to say, hey, well, you know, I think that there is a wrestling program at USC. Right. You know, they're, which they're, is crazy to me. As good as like California high school wrestling is, there aren't many schools in California at the college level that have wrestling. Right. You know, they more get dropped. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good question. I don't. I don't think the. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what the motivation would be for for somebody who right. has twenty I mean, million dollars to to go do it. So, yeah. but it would take somebody. Or a group oh. of people with twenty million dollars that they want to <laughs> throw away and put it in a a fund that operated the budget. So 
and it would have to be <clears throat> somehow earmarked that it can only be used wrestling because once you give that money to that school, uh, we'll put here, but oh, look, let's redo these facilities. And next thing you know, oh, well, our wrestling fund has dropped yeah. below whatever. And speaking of throwing money away, has anybody been to the hard rock yet? <laughs> no, <haven't>. not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself? No, nah, not yet, but I've heard some good things though. The restaurants are good, I guess. A little overpriced, here, but yeah, that's what I was going to say. I hear it's kind of pricey. Yeah, but yeah, they said it's a nice place. Yeah. They'll have some good music. Like Danny Martinez described it, he's like, it's like going to the fair. It's cheap to get in, but once you're in, <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. It'll be fun, though. <clears throat> yeah. I'll wait till it kind of dies down and then you can actually walk around, get to sit at a table game or something. Yeah, I talked to a guy that went and he said it took him 20 minutes to find a parking spot. I said, I'm not doing that. No. Or the, well, are they, there we go. Are they See, doing shuttles? This is I don't money know. that could be funding something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, could fund, it could be funding our Greco program. Oh. Yeah. Well, guys. Um, what about high school? Yeah, we can we can jump yeah. on that before we go. I know, uh, you know, obviously I think there's, you know, the talk of the town. I've been asked this multiple times. Can Hananiga win state this year? Can they beat St. Charles? Um, what do you think, Marty? You think this is the year that Hananiga can can, can win tackle a state the uh, win a state title? Yeah. Who man? I had some pretty good teams, and I never even got a lick towards winning a state title. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. Is it St. Charles? They got to beat. I think I would always think Mount Carmel is yeah. the team to beat. Yeah. Joliet um, Catholic. No, Joliet Catholic. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but Mount Carmel seems but, to be the the, the yeah. team that could reload and, and get a lot of kids that are, uh, you know, they still have the Mendoza, they still have um, the ninety five pounder, uh, or no, uh, the, he he's gone. Uh, they have he's a couple gone, other yeah. kids that are pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be awesome. I just don't know if Hananiga has the depth to yeah. do something like that. I mean, I got it. I feel truly feel they're going to probably go to state again this year. Yeah, and they this could be a year they place if it all, however it all well, works out. They but, were uh, they were a, a bad draw away from placing last year, I think. I yeah, think top yeah. team really. You know, yeah, talking yep. to Dale Eggert that night at the duels, like he even made that comment. He's like, "We got a good draw." You know. Yeah, I think yep. Hananika could be could have beat Libertyville last year, and I think Libertyville brought home a trophy. And right, that's no offense too. to Dale. I think Dale no. awesome does a great job there, but I mean, you know, you. It could have been Mount Carmel, whoever they wrestled in the finals in the first round. Right. And then they, I, st I think they've got a couple of holes where you've just got to kind of somehow make sure those guys don't get pinned, you know, and they, that's what, that's what made, they looked really good at the sectionals because yeah. the, some of their kids that were just average or below actually wrestled hard or the other, whoever they wrestled, the other guys were just a little bit worse. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you got, you know, three freshmen that come into that room last year that have been training. Right. You know, that that makes people get better. And then you throw in, you know, the Silva kid. I mean, the kids <laughs> around him yeah. have to get better. And the Demo kid, he's a senior this year, right? Yeah. I mean, he busts his butt. I mean, he's got to be a great example in that practice room, I'm guessing. So, guys, you know, they want to get better. They want to be like those guys. So, it helps. It would be awesome if they did. I mean, it'd be awesome just to get them in the finals, you know. But you got—I mean, that's a long yeah. season. Well, last year they uh, stay healthy. Had, yeah, last year they had a record. I think it was eight, right? Eight state qualifiers. Yep. And uh, four of them were state placers, or five. Yep. Four. Four. I think. Silva, the three freshmen, Cassiopeis, and Sindel, and, and uh, that's it. Did uh, Demo didn't Demo didn't did place. At the no. end, okay. I have to double check that. But either way, they had a record year uh, for for activity. Um, hopefully, uh, some of the other local kids can kind of like bring themselves up in in this uh, this year. I don't know who else is. Uh, I know a couple of those East kids are are definitely going to have good seasons. I think um, that Ty yeah. Smart. He's I, I trained with him one time this spring. He's uh he's definitely training in the off season and getting better. Um, and same with the the Wixen um, kid, he he is as well. So 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping that we have the opportunity to do some fun broadcasts of yeah. uh, local duels. And uh, yeah, anything else you guys are looking forward to? No, I'm. I don't know. I got. Well, I'm good right now. Yeah, just for it all to get going. Yeah, well, it's good. It's, uh, September, so a couple. It's months good to be back. Hopefully, we'll get some more viewers and listeners, and it'll be awesome this year.